Hello and welcome to lecture 26 of the course Computational Complexity. In this lecture, we will continue from where we left off in the lecture 25 and complete the proof of uh, baker gill solovey theorem. Uh, so baker gill solovey theorem shows uh, demo, uh, the existence of a, an oracle A such that P to the A is equal to NP to the A which we saw in lecture 25. In this lecture, we will see the second part, which is the existence of an oracle B such that P to the B not equal to NP to the B, right? And together, uh, these, uh, the, these two show that uh, we cannot use techniques that relativize such as diagonalization to settle uh, P versus NP problem, right? So uh, the second part is uh, more interesting than the first. Um, because uh, B, the, the goal is to construct a language B such that um, P, uh, P to the B is not equal to NP to the B, right. So, and uh, to, to, to do this construction, we will uh, rely on diagonalization ourselves, right. So, so th this is very interesting because we are trying to show that diagonalization does not really work in order to settle P versus NP. But uh, interestingly, the proof that, that shows that diagonalization does not work is actually rely, relying on diagonalization itself, right. So that way it is extremely interesting. And uh, as all proofs of, uh, with all proofs of diagonalization, there is an amount of uh, like do, uh, don't worry if you get confused or if you, if, if you are, if, if the reasoning is uh, complicated. Uh, just, just try to think calmly and, and try to watch it again or try to see it again. Uh, after after two or three times, uh, you will have a better un understanding of what is really happening here, right? So um, let let's see how uh, we uh, we get the language B, and in fact, uh, the language B is actually going to be constructed as part of the proof itself. Okay, so this is another uh, layer of uh, uh, another layer of uh, complication in the proof. Uh, I do not want to use the co word complication because it is not, it is it's another layer of in interesting, uh, another interesting layer of the proof that the, the language is constructed in the proof itself as part of the proof itself. Um, so let me ask you this, suppose there is a, uh, there is a, uh, um, let us say polynomial time machine P, right. Uh, that has access to an oracle B, right? This is an oracle B. So it can ask and it will respond. Now, will this, uh, now suppose you have to decide the language B itself, right? It is, it is certainly possible, right? So now to decide B, you just give it a string and the polynomial time, uh, the, the, the machine will just give the same string as input to the B oracle and then output yes or no correctly, right. But here the requirement is different. Here we have to uh, uh, get an, uh, uh, the, the decision version of the, the problem that is asked of the um, machine should not be this, should not be to decide the same language as the oracle, right. It has to be, it has to use the oracle but still not be able to answer this question, right. So that is what we will we'll see. So the language uh, that we, that uh, so what we will do is uh, the, the oracle language is B and we will show the existence of a language UB, right? And we will first show that UB is contained in NP to the B and then we will show that UB is not contained in P to the B and uh, because P is sub contained in NP, there is obvious implication that P to the B is contained in NP to the B and here we are demonstrating one language that is in P to the B, sorry that is in NP to the B but not in P to the B which means these two are different, right. The simple, these two together imply that P to the B is not equal to NP to the B, right. So this is how the proof uh, goes. So let us see what is UB, right. UB is simply uh, a unary language, meaning all the strings in the language are just comprised of ones, 
right it is just asking it is just 1 power n if there is a string of length n and b so maybe i'll just illustrate to the right side right so suppose b is let's say 1 0 1 0 0 0 0 1 in the increasing order of length okay right 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 0 0 0 0 and 1 1 1 1 1 right okay so it has one string of length 1 one string of length 2 two strings of length 5 and two strings of length 6 so ub in this case would simply be because it has a string of length 1 it has a string of length 2 it has two strings of length 5 it doesn't matter all it needs is one string of length 5 and two strings of length 6 so it it has a one string of length 6 this would be ub basically if there is a string of length i it in, includes it includes the unary i which means one i ones right so this is ub first uh, let us see that ub is uh, is contained in np to the b right so this is this this part ub is contained in np to the b regardless of what b is right so uh, this is easy to see basically uh, ub is contained in np to the b because uh, in order to decide UB, right, so you have an NP machine, sorry, you have an NP machine which has access to a B oracle, right. Uh, in order to decide UB, let's, so basically UB, uh, so, so, so basically it is given 1 power n for some number n and what we are asking is, uh, what we have access to is uh, the, the, the the oracle for b right so which means given is so we are we have to determine from the b oracle we have to determine is there a string of length n in b right so but then we have an np machine we have access to non determinism right so suppose n is 10 right so the np machine can guess a string of length 10 right so basically if it's if it if the alphabet is binary it has to length the, guess a string of 0 1 1 0 something some length some string of length n and then check whether that string is in uh, b by an oracle call and uh, this is okay because uh, it's an np machine and uh, if there are two power there could be uh, two power 10 uh, strings of length 10 if it is a binary alphabet if it's if it's a ternary or bigger alphabet it will be correspondingly higher but the point is that you can have an deterministic machine guess and query and if if there is such a string then there will be a correct guess right so all the np machine has to do is to guess the string of guess a string of the same length and query the oracle it accepts accept if oracle answers yes else reject so, if, if there is a string of length n out of the many computation paths, there will be one accepting path. If there is no string of length n, none of the paths will accept, right. So, this is why for any oracle b, uh, ub is contained in np power b, fine. Now, what we will do is, uh, we will... Uh, so this is the easy part the hard part is to show that ub is uh, or to construct b so till now notice that till now all that b could be anything right all that i have told is the connection between ub and b now we'll construct b that ub cannot be in pb right so now you can uh, you can see the kind of intelligence going on here right if we like i said earlier if we had if we were to query if you were to decide b itself for a p uh, for a machine with access to an oracle b it is it's trivial right you just have to ask is the given string in the, in the language b but now ub makes it uh, complicated or ub makes it interesting because uh, given is we are just giving the length right given 1 power n right we are just we have to find out if there is a string of length n 
but then there could if it's a binary alphabet there could be two power n strings of the same length now which is uh, like uh, how will the machine determine if if uh, or which string to query right and it has to do it in polynomial time it cannot query all the possible two power n length uh, two power n strings of length n right it has polynomial time it it, it cannot keep uh, querying all the strings it has to do it in limited time so what we will do is uh, what we will do is suppose let's consider uh, right let's consider uh, m1 m2 m3 etc as as oracle t turing machines right so these are all different oracle turing machines Right? It's it's a it's an uh, it's a countable set, so you can list them all down. And what we will do is, we will construct B in stages. Then we will construct the language B in stages. So first, we will make sure that B uh, uh, M one. Uh, so we want to show that U B is not contained in P B, right? Or P to the B. So suppose these are the Oracle Turing machines, or these are the are the let's say poly time oracle Turing machines, right? Okay, the poly time part is not really required, but still, just to make the point, I'll say it like this. Now, uh, we will rule out one by one each of these. Uh, each of these Turing machines. So first we will show that or first we will like we will build the language B in such a way that M1 cannot decide UB. Then we will add some strings to B so that M2 cannot decide uh, PB. Then we will add some more so that M3 cannot decide PB and so on. So step by step this construction can be done and we will we will explain how that will uh, rule out the possibility of any of these machines even so not not just M1. Uh, M1 to the B, yeah. So we will construct B in stages such that after ith stage, Mi to the uh, B does not decide UB. So none of these uh, uh, Turing machines, even with access to the Oracle B, cannot decide UB, right? So the problem is really what I said. It's because it it basically is getting the input as the length of the string. And then it has to decide whether uh, that string is in B or not, or that length string is in B or not. But then B could have exponentially many, uh, or there are potentially exponentially many strings of that length. And then you can only have, you have only limited time. So you cannot possibly query all of that, right? So this is the idea that we will do. We will, we will see how MI operates and we will make sure to include something that MI cannot find, right? Basically, if MI looks at 10 particular strings of a certain length, we will look at, we will include 11 string that MI will not look at. So this is what we will do. So, so, so the machine will answer it is not there, but, um, but we will, we would have included one such that the machine is fooled, right? So to start with B is the empty set and one by one, we will build the set B. So in each stage, we will include some strings uh, into B, and we will we will forbid some strings from B. We will make sure that so some strings are going into B, some strings are certainly not going into B. Some strings we may not decide in any stage, but that's okay. But some strings will be put in the accept or uh, in B pile, or some of them are the not in B pile. Okay. So let us see what we do in a general stage, stage i, right? So suppose till now we have uh, been uh, addressing some uh, uh, strings and who so some strings we know are in B, some strings we know are not in B. Suppose the longest tr string amongst all, uh, all those strings for which the status has been determined, right? So suppose consider the longest string for all those strings for which the status has been determined up to the previous stage, up to stage i minus 1. Suppose the longest string has length l, okay. Suppose the longest string has length l. Now you set n to be l bigger than l, say you can even set n to be 
L plus 1, right? So basically, now what we have is that for this value of n, right, for this value of n, uh, the status of all the strings of that length n are open. None of them have been put into B, none of them have been excluded, right? So basically, that gives us some flexibility which will be useful. In the stage i, we will make sure to fool the machine mi. Basically, we will again this I said already, but we will make sure that uh, mi to the a or mi to the b cannot decide ub. The, we will ensure that in by excluding or including some strings in into b at the stage i. Okay. So what we do in stage i is to run mi on one power n, right? Which is the unary input. So run mi meaning actually you are running mi to the b, oh, sorry mi to the b, right? But at this stage b is only partially constructed, right? It's still under construction, but that's okay. When it when it gets to a new query that is not yet decided, we will define what it does, right? That's the again this. Uh, so this is how b is constructed. When there is a new query for which the membership in b is defined, we will define at that point. Okay. So suppose mi queries a string x. Okay. So it, it mi has access to b oracle. So now mi wants to know the status of a string x, right? Now if the status has already been determined of that string, then we we just report as per whatever it has been decided. Again, this is something that one needs to note. If once a string is included into B or excluded from B, the status of that string does not change. Meaning, uh, we don't modify already included in, we don't remove from the included part or we don't include from the removed part. We only include or remove for the undecided part, right? So if the status is already decided, then we answer as per whatever we decided in the previous stages. If it is not decided, then we say x is not in B. Okay, so suppose we get a new query, the status of which is not known, we say it is not there. So now we answer that x is not B, not in B, and this is so now x is excluded from B, x is put in the exclude pile. And from now on, whenever this particular x is queried, it will be said that it is not in B, right? Now uh, we run mi on mi to the b on 1 power n for 2 power n divided by 10 steps. So notice this number, this is also very uh, interesting because this is kind of exponential time, so which means that it, it is bigger than any polynomial that that can that you can think of, but it is still lesser smaller than 2 power n and that is that plays a role, right. So after uh, 2 power n divided by 10 steps, right, after this many steps, the machine mi um, with, with, with the oracle b, it may say yes, it may say no or it may loop, right, could loop also. Right? If it loops then that means certainly it is not polynomial time. Right. But if it is a polynomial time machine, so maybe I will just erase, erase this and say if it is a polynomial time machine, if it runs in polynomial time, otherwise it may loop, but that is okay, we will we'll, we'll take, we will handle all of that if it runs in polynomial time. Okay. So there are two, three possibilities or two possibilities. One is that mi ends up accepting 1 power n or not accepting. Not accepting could be rejecting or looping, right? So if mi accepts 1 power n, so this is the most interesting part. Basically, we have to make sure that mi, uh, we have to fool mi. Basically, if, if the correct answer is uh, yes, then we have to make mi say no. If the correct answer is no, then we have to say make mi uh, answer yes. So if mi accepts n, so what does it mean for mi to accept n? Uh, which means uh, ideally if mi is a decider for u, u b, then it, it would mean that there is an n length string in b, right. 
But what will we do then? We will want we want to fool mi, right? So what we will do is we will exclude all the strings of length n from b. So we will not put any string of length n into b. All the strings of length n are excluded. So whatever query, uh, if mi is accepting one power n, uh, then we will not put any string of any length into b. Any any sorry any string of length n into b. So which means it is and it is giving the wrong answer, right? So for all so which means um, again we are we are saying that all the strings of length n are excluded from b. Okay. If if m i does not accept n one power n, right? If m i does not accept one power n, right? Which means it is saying that. Uh, there is no string of length n into b, right? Then what we do is we include a string of length n into b, right? So to to make sure to to make to make sure that we fool m i, so we we include one string of the length n. But uh, what if the the status of all the strings of length n are already settled? Well, that cannot happen. Why why not? Recall that before stage i, uh, the longest string whose status had already been determined was of length l, which was smaller than n, which means that all the strings of length l had their status uh, undecided, right? All the strings of length n. And during the course of uh, this execution, am I running on 1 power n? How many strings could have uh, uh, the status of how many strings could have been determined? We run mi only for 2 power n divided by 10 steps, right? Only 2 power n divided by 10 steps. So, in the worst case, it makes 2 power n divided by 10 queries, right? And there are 2 power n strings of length n. And in the worst case, we decide we 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 uh, we, we fix the status of two, at most 2 power n divided by 10 uh, strings of uh, strings of any length right which means there should be many strings of of length n whose status is undetermined so we include them into b so you, you again see what what is happening here mi is not accepting 1 power n which means b should not have any string of string of a, any string of length n but then we are kind of sneakily in, inserting a string of length n thereby making the answer of mi incorrect so just to summarize just to just to recap mi b always gives the wrong answer of on 1 power n why because suppose 1 power n or suppose there is a string of length b in the language or sorry sorry we suppose mi accepts 1 power n right right then we will not put any string into that in into b of of that length so so therefore the acceptance of 1 power n is not consistent with the language ub because ub will not have 1 power n because no string of length n is in b Right? And we can do that because uh, whenever a string is queried, if the status is not decide, uh, not known, then the answer we will exclude that from B. Right? So, which means that all the strings of length n are still not in included in B. And suppose M i does not accept one power n, then we sneakily insert a string of length one power n. So again, if it was a decider for U B. If it does not accept 1 power n, that means none of the strings of length 1 power n should have been there in B. But then we end up inserting one string of uh, length n so that uh, this is not a, again we make sure it is not a decider of UB. So therefore, MIB always gives the, MI to the B always gives the wrong answer on 1 power n. Wrong answer meaning. Uh, meaning different from different from a decider of ub right 
and at no point do we change the status of a of any of a string that whose status has been decided right so we never modify putting something from outside to inside or inside to outside so this means that mib does not decide ub right so therefore ub is not in polynomial time or polynomial time machine to the uh, with the access to the oracle b again so i know it has it can be a bit confusing so i will say it again ub is a string of is a set of all uh, lengths uh, 1 power n where s, there is a string of length n and b right so it is just ub contains the lengths uh, for which a string of that length is in b but the length is not written in binary but in unary first ub is in uh, np N power b because np to the p because given the length uh, the np machine can guess a certain string and query the oracle b for any b for any oracle second uh, to show that it is not in p, p to the b what we do is what we do is we 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 do it kind of diagonalization right so essentially what we are doing here is diagonalization we we construct b in such a way that each machine is kind of is fooled so what is the response of mib we try to understand and then we make sure that we flip the output and there are enough strings in b for each of each length that allows us to flip the output because there are many non committed strings right so so at stage i we will rule out we will we will make sure to fool mi right so let l be the longest string whose status has been determined and when we choose n to be bigger than l meaning all strings in a length l a length n the status is not determined and we run mib for 2 power n divided by 10 steps which is bigger than any polynomial right so the status is not decided then we answer no and if it is a so if mi is a polynomial time machine then it will certainly say yes or no and we will make sure that the answer is incorrect if it if it says yes then what we will do is uh, on the on the length on the string in 1 power n then what we will do is to make, make sure that we don't put any string of length n into b if it if it's if it does not accept 1 power n then what we will do is we will find a string that was not queried and insert it into b so therefore making mib's and answer always different from that of a decider of ub hence mi to the b does not decide ub for any i so this is what is happening in this proof hence so since all the turing machines or even all the oracle turing machines can be enumerated uh, we can therefore conclude that there is no polynomial time machine with access to oracle b that can decide ub uh, right so maybe one thing that you can think think through is why does this like where have we used the fact that it is deterministic polynomial time in this proof if it was not a deterministic polynomial time uh, would the same proof not work where, where where do we use the fact that there is only determinism or deterministic polynomial time this is something that you can think about uh, just to just to recap uh, i have already recap we we come we we constructed an oracle b such that p to the uh, oracle b is not equal to np to the oracle b right already recapped and summarize the proof but then if it is confusing feel free to go through it again and of course use the forums use the discord and please ask questions if there is any confusion and perhaps we can also discuss it in one of the live sessions and uh, this completes the proof of the baker gill solvay theorem where we show that uh, no uh, uh, a proof that relate relativizes as more specifically a diagonalization based proof cannot be used to resolve p versus np problem 
And with that, I'll conclude uh, lecture 26. Thank you.